here's your first look at the columnar theory. Now, what I've done here is I've got three amps, as you can see, and in the top, I put three rows on each amp. That's employee normal. Each of those three rows on each amp is in its own block. That's how we're used to seeing Teradata. We know that row has got a column in it that's the primary index. It hashed to the proper amp. Take a look below. This is the same information, same rows, same data, except it's called employee columnar. So that's the second example. And as you can see, just like the first example, it actually had five columns in it, three rows, but it almost looks like five separate tables. What I want you to understand are two things that are going to really help you out here. Number one, if you were going to read employee normal and wanted to read just one column of one row, you would still have to bring in that entire block to do so. The second example thing here with employee columnar is that if you wanted to read one column, one row, you would have to bring in one of those blocks. They're called containers. Same information at the top as the bottom. Top is one block. The bottom is five separate containers. I want you to think of them as five separate blocks. So that's what I want you to understand first. Here's the second thing. Understand that an amp in the top gets the entire row. We've always seen that in Teradata. But in the column, the amp still gets the entire row. They're just breaking up each column almost as if they're in separate blocks. I've drawn the data for you. Here's an excellent picture. In the top, we see our three rows. We see our five columns. In the bottom, we see the same information, but each column is its own separate container. Remember, here are the fundamentals. Column or tables must be a no PI table, so no primary index. The no PI brings even distribution to the table. Columnar tables allow columns to be partitioned. An amp still holds the entire row, but partitions vertically. Columns are placed inside their own individual container. Think of them as blocks. All containers have the same amount of rows in the exact order. Single columns or multi-columns can be placed inside containers. Each container looks like a small table for input-output purposes. Add up all the containers and you rebuild the row. Columnar tables make sense when users query only certain columns in the table. When a row is deleted, it is not physically deleted, but marked deleted. Now, let me tell you about what we're really talking about here. We've got our columnar design, five containers, our three rows. If I were to say, how much money does Raphael Manal make? you would say, well, let's see, Raphael Manal, he's the first row in these two containers. Oh, he's making 90000 because that's the first row in that container. That's why they make these no PI. They want the data spread evenly. Then they keep everything set exactly. The first row in this container, the first row in this container, the first row in this and this and this, that really allows us to rebuild the row. You see, if you were to say select asterisk from this table, I want all columns. They go, oh no, we shouldn't have a columnar design. We got to kind of individually bring in each one of these and it makes it more difficult. But when you say, I want to know the average salary, one container goes in and that's when they go, oh, it's brilliant. We had hardly any data movement. That's what you want in a columnar table. You find out which tables have a large amount of columns, 
But more importantly, how are people querying it? If they're just asking for a few columns each time and you can't figure out which ones they're going to ask for, this is an excellent design. That's what I want you to see with Columnar. Hey, let's get down to it. This is actually how you would create a Columnar table. Create table, you got your table name. You've got your columns and your data type. No primary index. Partition by column. Done.